call the meeting to order. We have a motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Gore. Resolve the minutes of the February 6th regular meeting of council uh, be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? All in favor. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolve that the agenda for the February 20th, 2018 regular meeting of council be received. Discussion? Yeah, I'd like to propose an amendment. We've kind of been dealing with over email the proposal from the chamber to uh, to hold some sort of a, 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 meet, a meeting with regards to the events of a few weeks ago. So I propose we add it to uh, item number five so we can get an answer sorted out. Okay. Any objections from council? Okay, and that will be added. You'll remember that. I'll remember that. All in favor? Carried. Okay, the first item on the agenda, item 3.1, is the public hearing on local improvement bylaw 2 2018. I call the public hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the local improvement bylaw. 2018 and to allow any interested person to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection regarding this bylaw. I request any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. So if you wish to make a presentation to the hearing, please feel free to come forward and sit at the table and just give your civic address. And uh, there we go. Is that what this is about? Yeah. Just feel free to come and sit up at the table and if you have some concerns or some questions, Derek or somebody can try and answer the questions. I just want to know in English what this means. Does this mean, this is how I read it. Um, if, okay, I bought my house four years ago. I'm under the assumption that I paid for uh, the pavement going by or a portion of it. Mm -hmm. So if I buy my house tomorrow, I don't do that anymore. Is that what this means? Uh, the, the value of your house will have gone up. Who, every house in town has been, the pavement's been paid at one time and it's reflected in the value of the house. So, right. I mean, so, I mean, once this pavement is paid, a future buyer won't have to pay for it, no. Right. But those new houses that are being built, I think it's on 13th. So, the cost of paving will be included in the price of those houses? That's up to the developer. That will be up to the developer. Okay. So if I, was, if I happen to be that developer and I, I built a house there and I sold it to you and I said, okay, I'm going to include, I'll pay for the, the pavement or the asphalt and I would just include it in the price that I'm selling it to you. But it would be up to the developer, the person selling the house. And they don't tell you that all the time. I guess it depends on the developer. I mean. <laughs> yep. Any but, other questions? Just feel free to. Like I'm sure, like if it was paid, if the developers put some money aside, it, it, a, a developer would say that portion of this house is not, or this, these funds have been set aside so that when it does come to time to pave the street, they would forward those funds on behalf of the homeowner that they sold to. So. I know personally when I bought my house, I'm a stupid girl, born in Bush. <laughs> Never had that conversation. Right. Like, and if, if the developer did collect the fees or charge a fee for his estimated portion of his stuff, it would be my assumption that that would be a clause or whatever in your um, purchase agreement that would state funds have been collected or you've been charged by the developer um, for those development fees. Bill, do you have? So um, the cost of paving, if we so choose to put it onto our taxes, what's the interest rate and the co actual cost going to be reflected on our tax bills like per year? Has there been a set rate for that? 
Okay, my understanding is the rate shown on there is 5.5%. Right. And, and my, we can, I think we can borrow it from the province for 4%. So, well, we need an actual, like, what's it going to be? You know, it's like approximate. I think it's approximate. Yeah, this is so approximate. On there, it's uh, that's the that's an estimate of a high percentage. When the that's that's when, a high percentage. When it goes, yeah. So when we tend, tender it to the banks, it's normally a lower, yeah. but so that you guys are not given a higher percentage. That's what we're concerned about. Yeah, so you won't get a, the reason why we do that is so that mm -hmm. there won't be a higher. We know that it's going to be lower. Okay. But let's say if we would have put it at four percent and the bank came back at right. four point one, we would have had to go through the whole process again. Okay. So we always pick a percentage higher, that's considerably higher, to give ourselves a margin of error for when we put put the loan out to tender to the all the different okay. banks. They can come back and uh, so and we know it'll be, be higher than fresh. five and a half. It would probably, probably be low. That's yes. Right. Okay. So does the borrowing bylaw not have to be in place first before this is done? This um, this is the first part of the process. But so the we borrowing, do, so the borrowing bylaw does not have to be in place. No, well this history? will this will be the first part of the borrowing bylaw, and then when we actually go to borrow the money, then that's when we do the amendment to the borrowing bylaw, which sets you know which bank we're going to borrow from. And, you know, Okay, so the borrowing bylaw has been done based on an approximation That's of right. 5%. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this bylaw is. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and so the amounts that have been quoted us, I know the last time I had a conversation when they did it two years ago and Derek sent the letters. I'm assuming that this is the maximum amount. Again, if people are given the full information, is it the max amount? Is it an approximate? Could it go either way? You know, but it doesn't stipulate that. So you're saying is the amount on the schedule can it go higher? The like the amount of what we've been quoted. So, so the only thing on your the letter that you quoted, the only thing that's variable on there is the interest rate. Okay. The actual project that's set by the the, the bylaw <coughs> and the schedule of fees that we uh, have passed previously, where it's taking the is it the three year average of our previous. Um, there is five previous projects. Five previous projects averaged and then giving you a firm figure. Based on that. Based on that. So and okay. then so, yeah, so then every and then with the intent every year that schedule is updated based on the previous five years to know exactly what the quote. So that we're not estimating like last time. This time you know exactly what the figure is gonna be, with the only variable being the interest rate which is quoted high, so that when we do tender it to the, the banks, the interest rate will be based on that. So what's yeah. quoted on here will be the actual cost of what we would pay, like if we were to pay in full? Yes. Um, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> if this goes through whatever, how, I guess when do you have to make a decision, whether you pay in full or whether you do the, <coughs> the payments, like I mean, <coughs> Because sometimes that can make a big difference. <coughs> to so when when do you have to make that decision by? If it goes through, do you have to make it now? Do you have to make it? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Did it say on there, Derek? I think it's in a, within a month of the passing of the bylaw. In 30 days. Passing of the bylaw. I'm pretty sure it says someplace that. I see if I can find it. Yeah, it says payment, lump sum yeah. payment upon completion of construction equal to the fee shown above for a yearly amount um, over 15 years annually. It says that you, if you're paying, you have to pay it one lump sum ap after completion of the project, right? But which option? When do you need to know the option? So you're saying like, like this bylaw here at 30 days after after this hearing then? Well, that, that can be set by council. Uh, it does state that council, once the project is complete, which we intend to be done sometime this summer, council can set the due date of when those lump sums can be accepted or when or if the person decides to go through your taxes. Right. Yeah. 
Section 8, I'm just reading it here, says uh, that at any time prior to or within 30 days following the completion of the work, any ratepayer of the area affected by this local improvement as described in Schedule C here to may commute and pay in a one-time principal sum that part of their share of the debt herein authorized in respect to the frontage and or flankage rates provided herein said CAO of the town of Stone Island or a whole bunch of stuff shall be levied against the said. So within, I'll read it again, within 30 days following the completion of the work, uh, you can have that time to decide whether you're going to put it over 15 years, you're going okay. to pay okay. one lump sum. Okay, so can I ask a question, and I don't know if it's relevant Sorry, to this right here, but we were given this attachment, um, local improvement fee policy, and it shows who's for and who's against. Um, I don't know if this is relevant right here, but I'm kind of curious, like, what, I see what it is written here, but what was the other options? I'm not sure, I've never local seen that document. Policy. Other options. Yeah. Do, we have, really, do we have that in our agenda? Mm -hmm. you know, it was part of the package. Yeah, it was part of the package that came through. Did you want to see? Sure, I'd like to see it. Does this paving, is it in the plan? And maybe I missed that part of the conversation to be done this year? Yes. yes. I see on that was the full of resolution. That's that one two years ago. Two what what were the other options as far as a policy? Yeah, because obviously some are for and some are against mm -hmm. it, so what were I, I guess the, the, well this yeah. This resolution was just basically, are you for or against this? There, I mean, there's plenty of other options. I was the one that won against, but uh, I mean, I have my own feelings on, on how it should have been done, but obviously it wasn't with the council, so, or the way the majority of council felt. So I guess there, there's, uh, there's lots of different options. I guess this resolution is only, is only, do you agree with this option that's being presented? Okay, okay. So. so there was an end number then presented and then well, that would have, that came from a committee, and I, I'm not on that committee, but I I guess I disagreed with with the what was proposed. So, and I guess I didn't, I never presented an alternative. The lady at the back, you had a question. She asked if it was being done this summer. Derek. Yeah, he said. Go ahead. So, if it's being done this summer, I'd like to know what's being done with the third. So that once it's paved, it is not going to be wrecked within a few years. Because third is not even close to having the proper base done. How do I mean? Um, I think everybody here. Can we have third. third. Um, I said I third. Totally Third, I said, what's happening with third before <coughs> the pavement is done? Because third isn't even close to having the proper base work done. It's worse now than it was done. before the so called proper base work was done. So, I guess just the overview the, the project will include a leveling course. So, like our, <coughs> our storm sewer catch basins, we obviously can't raise them up to curb height. Yeah, I'm not talking about the catch basins. Or I'm talking about the road because it is in very, very poor condition. There is, there is, uh, I believe, well, I can't remember, but if I was to guess it, what we put in was 12 inches of pit run and 12 inches of A-base and separate lifts and compacted, uh, according, just according to the town specifications. And, uh, I guess, are you, are you saying there's inadequate material on the road? Well, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, but I know it is in worse condition than it was, like I said before, the so-called proper um, base work was done. Like, 12 is much better. Like, are you talking about, like, the potholes on the road, or is it... I'm just talking about the road in general. No, it's, it's, like, it's like It we, rains a bit. Mm -hmm. It's basically swamp. I, you can't even walk down it. 
it's it's in poor condition and I've been saying this for a number of years so now we're at the point of paving so what's going to be done to that road to ensure that the paving is going to last and that it's not going to let's correct me if I'm wrong Derek but that's where that leveling is going to be fixed out because we changed the base to stop the heaving like they got removed the poor material that was in the sub road that caused the, the heaving with the frost boils in the spring. That's <coughs> that material's been corrected and the geotech's been put down <coughs> to address that issue. And then as before the paving comes in, there's gonna be a, another layer of material <coughs> put in to <coughs> cap it so that it's smooth and properly prepped before the asphalt go, goes down. Okay, so I that is the gonna paving contractor would, would do all that basically the paving you know. That'll be a part of your contract, right. the leveling course. Yeah. Okay, so there's one thing. in July or August, but I guess it depends on how this hearing goes. Yes. Okay, so they'll be in charge of making sure that the road is in proper condition, not the town. It'll be in their contract. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you, Carl. Any, Any other questions or comments? Or is, is 12, is it ready for curb and like you guys did work two years ago, was it? Or the last four with, yeah, yeah, two years ago. So is it ready for paving that? Yes. Again, there will be a little in course. I guess we're thinking of our driveways. Yeah, as far as we go is, is the curb. Uh, but yes, there will be curb, gutter, asphalt, pavement. And your driveways would. But what I'm asking is, it ready for that now, or are you going to be digging some more? And it's going uh, no, there'll be no more excavations. Just a leveling course, just to bring everything to elevation, and uh, <coughs> asphalt and curbing that are getting installed. Okay. Okay. Scooter traffic. <laughs> so, can I ask another question? Certainly. So all of the third was the proper base was not put in, it ended at 13th. I'm understanding all of third was originally the proper base work supposed to be done, but I'm understanding was because it too much was dug up at one point and there was a bunch of rain in that, that extra money was, I guess, had to go into pumping out water so and so forth to do that piece of road and therefore the rest of third did not get the proper base work. So is the proper base work going to be finished on third before this paving so that the entire third can be paved? Or you're going to do it in pieces? We, it will be done in pieces. So we're going to pave to 13th, not including the intersection. So in, in the future there will be a, we'll likely s actually stop that pavement two to three meters before that so that we'll have a good base that we can dig into, connect onto, because the the rest of third will also need a uh, base replacement before the paving. And that work is yet to be done. Yeah. And that's not gonna happen until if and when there's more development or yes. Okay, any other questions? Last call for questions from anybody? I'm assuming we'll be notified in a timely manner. Now we'll deal with the resolution right away. So. Because that's when you think we were notified when we were coming. The pavers you mean? Or Pardon me. You were asking, would you be notified before this all started? Is that what you asked? Well, um, I don't want to be away for a week or two and come back and surprise have missed the letter. I guess is what I'm trying to like, say. Are you are you asking to know if the project is? Be going ahead or not? No, you know, I, I want it to go ahead. Or you want to know when the crews months. will be there? I don't even care about that. So, I just... So, I, I don't understand the question you're asking. 
Um, <laughs> um, like when the lump sum can be paid, we'll have enough time to pay it so it okay. doesn't get done over yeah. this 15 yeah. year thing? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll say again, we'll give us a chance for anybody. Having heard all persons present, I adjourn this hearing. Thank you very much for your input. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Lurie, resolved at Bylaw 2, 2018, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to authorize the expenditure of borrowing money for the installation of curb, gutter, and asphalt pavement in the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 1200 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Okay, we have... Things are in order here. RCMP. The RCMP is not here? Yeah, there you go. Come on. Did they have a certain amount of time to give us an objection? They had a certain amount of time to do so, so they never objected. Well, there was only one objection on file. Yes, no, the only one I see. Welcome, gentlemen. Okay. How are you tonight? Hello. <coughs> Welcome to our council meeting. We appreciate you <laughs> being here tonight. Uh, Council has the November, December, and January RCMP reports, so possibly have some questions for you from those reports. Councilor DeVarty. Um, I know it's the middle of winter and we probably don't want to be thinking about summer, but do you know where we're at as far as, uh, you know, and I want to use the right word because there's two different programs, the auxiliary constable, is it? That we sometimes that we got last year. Are we going to get one this year? That, uh, That's a reserve school. Oh, yeah. See, so yeah, I knew there's two different programs, and I get them wrong all the time. Yeah, the auxiliary program has changed, and it's, it doesn't exist in its past form. The reservist one, uh, essentially, we don't know. The application went in some weeks ago. We we're really, really early. Uh, we really lucked out last summer. We were supposed to get a reservist for one month. We got them for six months. Oh, wow. That will never happen again. I would like it to, but I, I've asked for a couple more months, but we'll have to wait and see. Is there anything we can do as far as lobbying to, to uh, make our case, or, or is that? We're competing with smaller detachments, northern detachments, and I'm not, a, I'm not aware of any way that lobbying would, would help. But if I, I see a, a window of opportunity, I'll be getting a hold of you guys to let you guys know. Um, I see on your reports here, and if I'm reading it right, um, you've got last orange column, the prisoners lodged. Uh, it looks like there's a, it's a significant amount. Um, are those broken out between like, municipalities, and are they like the towns charged uh, a fee on their contract <coughs> for persons yes. lodged? If they're if they're picked up from town, it, it, the town is charged. If they're picked out of town. The province is charged. And do you see it as that, without having comparative data here, like from previous years to compare it to, um, is that a trend that's going up or is that a constant number that's going up? That's what I figured. Is there a way we can combat that to bring it down? If we couldn't do it, we couldn't see it. But if we make, if somebody needs to be lodged, we'll lodge them. If we have an alternative, we look at the alternative. Because essentially, that you know, you've got to bring in guards. Um, whenever you got somebody lodged in your cells, you're assuming the responsibility and the risk for their safety and health. And so, so that's indicative of the type of crimes or re of it, the safety, their, their type of crimes, and whether or not they can look after themselves because of perhaps intoxication, in one form or another, and whether or not there's somebody that's willing to take charge of them, and they also have to be capable of taking charge of them. So essentially that we do look at options, but when, when the decision is made to lodge, it, we do it for a reason. 
so it's a disturbing trend of what I'm seeing here potentially. If I could just speak on that, uh, um, I, I didn't look at uh, December, but as you can see in November there was 51, December there was 68, and January there was 41. So that's just a build up towards Christmas. Uh, you know, December is higher because there's there's people are there's more people in the community potentially because they're here to have Christmas, and and some of those numbers could have been spiked right at right at the Christmas time. And with with January being at 41, I did recall that, that January of last year, I'm pretty sure it was only 34. So you can see the big drop off from December having a whole bunch because of the Christmas season, and then going to 41. And then last year in January, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was 34. And that's a good. That's just like persons, not days. Just prisoners, like for the whole detachment. Okay, so that it, that doesn't include like person that stays in for one night versus one that's there for an entire week or so. No, he stays for a week. We want to get them out as soon right. as we can. It's a holding cell. But the, I'm but looking from the cost aspects. Yeah. It's, there's it does yeah. increase from year to year overall. But it's clarification by the month by month, but that's good. But from year to year, I've looked at it carefully. I submitted reports from 2014 to 2016, because I did it in 2017, to our headquarters, and there was a trend. Mm -hmm. Trend of it going upwards? Yes. Yeah. yes. Sort of a question, sort of along the same line. Uh, one of the issues has always been uh, members transporting mental health patients. And the province, if my memory serves me correctly, said that they were going to start or work on a program where there would be a separate uh, organization, almost like security guards or something that would be trained to transport those people to take that workload from the RCP. Has that anything ever come across? Um, there is a separate call later for the transport of prisoners for the for those for those things. So that's not going to be billed to. I was just thinking mental health there, isn't it? It's prisoners. Oh, uh, didn't you mention the mental health? Mental, mental health. health. Yeah. Well, it's called prisoner transport. Some of the criminal code we we JV later to a different cost center, and the sheriffs end up paying for it. But for the mental health, it is our dime, mm -hmm. and it continues to be our dime. And essentially, there has been a number of changes. Our last commissioner. Assistant Commissioner Kevin Barossa. He was working on it since he first got here. He's here for two and a half years before he went to Ottawa again. And now we have Scott Kalati. And essentially he's taken up the torch, but the change was made when the change of government it delayed things a little bit. But we got some wording changed to RCMP upper management within the province. We're not there yet. I'm in regular communication with the Regional Health Authority along that line. And essentially we're not there yet. That I can't speak for them, but we've got our ongoing conversations, and I began to meet with them quarterly. Yeah, but wouldn't it be? I, I know I, that was my mistake to, to think that that was the other call here, but now you made me think of uh, once they're an MHA prisoner, like say it's a town person, when they have to, if they have to be transported to Dauphin, would it? Would we switch it to provincial, provincial, once provincial. We, so we leave here. Okay. While they're in cells, if it's yours, then it's your your dying. But the actual transfer, we've been switching it to provincial. Like I think the issue path. before was that if it was a mental health patient, there wasn't really any any, any crime committed, but uh, whatever was happening required this person to be transported, say, to, to Dauphin. So it was taking an officer out of your detachment and having to drive this person to Dauphin to drop off and then come back. It would be charged to the to the provincial okay. for that for that person. That's, uh, we're, we're just down to member while he's transporting and. Correct. And quite often it's the person off Correct. duty, you know, yeah. that, that would be doing that so that we're not expending, you know, the resources of the person that's on duty here. Because yeah, I'm be aware of uh, conversations with DMH that is going on where there's potentially a pilot project going on in Brandon yes. to where your members don't have to um, wait for them to be seen or admitted. They're just dropped off and they're handed over to an individual that's certified to do that. At the local hospital? In Brandon. Are you talking about Brandon, Brandon. and Dr. Uh, I have, from my understanding, it's just Brandon to start. Okay, gotcha. So, Councillor, what do you know? I'm just, I just keep thinking of having RCP officers <laughs> trained to do the things you do so well, taking mentally handicapped people who need help, and, and you're not in, in, in the detachment area to, to do the things you're trained to do. I, I'm not even, it's not that the cost is concerned, you're losing, losing them. And that was something government promised us that we're going to change. So second point I'd bring up, uh, and thank you, Steve, for sending me to the right meeting place. Standing outside for 15 minutes, wondering where everybody was, so cold. I tracked on Steve. At, at the meeting, it was a hard meeting. There was a, a significant concern by half a dozen of the people there, and, and it's anecdotal at best, that there's a, they have a concern that crack, and crack cocaine is the same stuff, and methamphetamines 
are significantly on the rise in our community. I said, do you have any data that shows that? Well, we don't. And I'm not a big fan of, well, we know why I heard. Uh, can you enlighten us a little on that world in the last year or so? <coughs> uh, it's increasing. Pardon? It's increasing. Yeah, and we're taking some action, and just how big it is, don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But it's it's been a change, and there's certain factors that came into play, yeah. and you could probably guess what they are. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that uh, we're taking steps, and we're trying to get a, a sort of a handle just how big this is. But there has been a change. Okay. Thank you. And it's away from prescription drugs. Any other, Councilor Friesen? Uh, did I see COPP come up somewhere? Yes. Tell me about that. Can you? Oh, I should be just saying the whole thing. What is the cost? <coughs> and by the way, I had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce. We didn't have a quorum, but we had the executive director, we had the chair, and we had a couple others there. And uh, that meeting was the date. I believe it was the seventh at eleven o'clock in the morning. Um, very nice people, of course. And basically, that's when I presented about COPP. Uh, Vanessa Turcotte, you might know, she, just over a year ago, that was part of her community profile capital project. And there was advertising in the Star and Times, and she did a number of things. So I had her share all that material she had, I put it into my binder, and then I got a hold of Stacey Grindle, and uh, she arranged for a meeting. And basically, um, we, last time we went broad, community-wide, this time I'm focusing on business leaders. And I've started to talk to business leaders. The chamber will be talking to business leaders. We need somebody that, from the, it's got to be community driven, not RCP driven, community driven, and then we'll help facilitate. Uh, I've been in contact with the provincial coordinator. I've shared contact information with the chamber, so I, I imagine they've been in contact with them as well. It's not the chamber taking it on, the chamber is always going to be active in soliciting, educating, and partnering with us, and trying to get this thing off the ground. Because if we have a leader, start recruiting people, I will assign somebody as a COPP a liaison officer, and that person will uh, report directly to me. Uh, essentially, I think we had it twice in the past before my time, and for different reasons, it, 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 it went away. When it worked, it worked really well. There might have been a couple of hiccups at some point, I don't know. But if there were, it's something I would deal with, and it will be addressed very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Just to have, have you considered promoting this on Facebook? Because Councilor Sath has proven to us how wonderfully efficient it is for disseminating information. Opportunity for people in our community to join. I think the chamber's looking at it. Stacy probably will do that. Yes. Okay. <coughs> anything else? Do you gentlemen have anything to add? I have nothing right now. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are either of you going to Dauphin tomorrow? Or is that I am. Thank you. And Tracy yes, you should. Okay. I will probably be in a different vehicle if I okay. had that very nice offer. Yeah. Yeah, I did, like, um, Steve had said he was going, so I offered to for him to ride with us. Um, Trace is going as well. Yes. But You've never ridden on a trip with her. You don't know how she drives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take your own car, That's why you got the invite. Yeah. Yeah. You might have to follow us. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow's meeting. Too. I mean, it's, it's news to me, so it'll be a learning experience, and it should be very interesting for those of you who are following. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Okay, we have the motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Moria, resolved that the RCMP reports for November, December 2017, and January 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So we have a delegation. We have Lana, General Manager of the War Veterans Hall. Welcome to our uh, Council meeting. Hello. Council has a copy of the report. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any questions about it? Any questions for councillors? I see the bathroom bar that will be happening this year. Correct. The food label will be having this year. Yeah. Sound system and water sumpter, you're just kind of putting those bugs in our ear for, for a future year, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, the sound system, not necessarily. Or is there some sort of a yes. 
or some sort of an agreement with uh, We have a couple organizations okay. that have approached me to donate money towards it. So I have looked into updating it, and that update will allow two new speakers and a whole new system. Um, we can use the existing speakers that are in the roof if we wanted, but it's not really advisable. <coughs> really beneficial. The two speakers should be more than enough. The sound will be in there and uh, people will be able to use their iPhones, their um, iPods, hook up into it like the Swan Valley Dance Festival when they want to play their music. Um, also the like the Outdoor Association will be able to use two mics, do a live auction in there with no problems and no feedback. So I'm looking to move forward with that as soon as possible. Just Have you got the, costs on that already? Or? Uh, under five. So and, and remind me again what the, the individual or the... Uh, it's <coughs> one from the West Mac Communications Group and the Valley Stage players have also approached in uh, order to see the quote and get it and then they'll decide on what they want. Oh, okay. And there was another one as well. Weren't they talking about the lights, the stage players? Well, they were, but they are also very interested in the sound because they have to bring in their own equipment to do that. And they use the big speakers, which takes up a lot on the floor. So being able to just come in and plug in, ideally, that's what everybody wants. What is two mic, the option for two mics enough? No, you could have more than okay. that. But I know for the, the um, Outdoor Association, they wanted one on the stage and then a uh, wireless, not wireless, a cordless one for on the floor where they could walk around in auction, so. Mm -hmm. <coughs> How are bookings looking for 2018? Up, down? Here, I didn't get a touch. Oh, they didn't get it? No. Oh, okay, bookings are good. Okay. Yeah, they're, I mean, we did lose the, um, um, Sorry, the auto pack or the claim center, the driver's test. Oh, really? We did lose that, yeah. What did they move to? They moved to the claim center. Really? Mm hmm So that's a significant value there. Yes. But we're up with socials and weddings. We have 17 confirmed this year, which is much higher than last year. And we have uh, another three for next year already booked. Four. Four more. Socials are up. We have a lot of socials this year. So that's really good. Councilor Delorean and Councilor I can pass this one around if you guys just. So on the on the food labor alert, we have a resolution coming on later on in the meeting mm -hmm. and we we uh, I guess it hasn't passed yet, but should it pass <coughs> it would be that anybody can use it, but we want that person to be thoroughly vetted because it it is a intricate piece of yes. equipment so so as much as you can learn from the when it comes that would be good so that you can yes, make I sure not plan. anybody is using it or yeah I do plan on anybody on. can use it as long as they yes. know what they're doing exactly which is like all the equipment there sure. <laughs> which is like yeah. all the equipment yeah. there when I first came on mm -hmm. as manager they yeah. I requested for them to come down and train me so that I could show people how to use it mm -hmm. and I'll do the same I'll watch Carly and her dad using it and train on it so that if we have another potential renter I can show them did I hear you correctly you have uh, some individuals who will donate money to the sound system? Mm -hmm. How do you go, how do you go what, what's the process? Do they come to you and volunteer to do that or they do you ask did. them? I didn't ask them actually, they came to me and... Is it appropriate to ask people like Swan Valley Outdoors for example, we need those mics, maybe a note to the president say hey any chance you might want to contribute it will make your dinner go well in the town <coughs> financially prudent right now? Any other questions? Anything? Councilor Moore. Um, you've got out here the dishwasher. What issues are we having with that thing? The water is really hard at the hall, so we're having a lot of trouble with just the maintenance of it. And it was being used on a regular basis by Carly when she was there. Um, 
which she did between anywhere from 500 to 750 jars a day um, going through the dishwasher, but she has eliminated that process now. She's no longer using the dishwasher for them. So, um, but at that time, we were constantly doing repairs. Tony would have to come in, and there's a lot of hard water that builds up in the in the hoses, and then you have to take all that scale out of there because the water won't fill into the machine properly, and then it doesn't come up to level, and then your elements aren't being covered. And so, so the, where I'm getting at is that um, cost of putting in a water softener would that be cheaper than actually these ongoing repairs to make that a no-brainer repair? It's not a no-brainer. It's very, it's very hard to reach areas. So, and like, so Tony is the it? only man that knows how to do so it. So, we're paying him more in repairs than it actually is for the cost of a water softener. Um, or have you priced that out yet? No, I guess I haven't priced that out. I'm sure the rest of the council, that'd be something number that council would be interested in. Yeah. In, in seeing. Yeah, for sure. The the dishwasher at this time is really taken a beating. For Speaking for myself, if it costs two thousand dollars to put a water softener in, and we're spending yeah. four thousand fixing this yeah. thing, it's not a hard decision to make. Right. But if the numbers are reversed, then we have to take a look at it. Right. I don't want to see it down. My problem is Tony can't always come when we're, when it's needed, and the events that we have, especially during the summer, they you cannot run a wedding without a dishwasher. So. So have you concluded that number in your budget? No. <coughs> Not for this year, because Tony just came and told me. Think about a water softener. So. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't anything else to ask. Well, thank you very much for coming to our council meeting. Thanks. We appreciate the work that you do. Yes, thank we you. do. And thank thank you. Yeah, you. Thanks for all the good work you do. Thank you. Too I much smiling. That. What's that? Too much smiling. Have a good evening. Thanks, Lana. We have a motion moved by. Second by Councilor Morrow, resolve the Veterans Community Hall Manager Report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have the letter from Camp Bridges for Council's information. We also have the letter from the Manitoba Good Roads Association. We have a letter from the RMS of St. Anne regarding the stars uh, air ambulance. Relative, uh, your worship, relative to the good roads, was there not a, a, a fund they wanted us to pay to belong to that? In that letter? Mm -hmm. So that's a motion to pay them, I'll pay it down here later on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any willingness. We're not going to pay it. I don't think there's any willingness. Is, it, is there a motion on the table? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Because we should reply to it one way or the other. Do you reply to every piece of spam you get in your mailbox? I don't spam it. I don't get it. Like just the random we send out to all municipalities. Okay. Okay, go to new business, water services, metallic and non-metallic piping. Um, bringing this up because uh, uh, there's possibly a, a hole we have in our procedures as far as uh, uh, and, and we may have had an incident already in town with this, but uh, when we when we change a water service, uh, it used to have metallic piping. The electrical system of the of the building is, is usually grounded to the water pipe. Now, when we change the piping to some form of non-metallic piping, I don't know what our procedure is and I, as far as. Do we let the let the property owner know that they need to get an electrician in there to, to provide a new ground? Do we what what our procedure is? So I just wanted to bring this to light and have and get to have council to direct uh, Derek to work on some sort of policy a procedure and possibly to go back and look at make sure that we haven't put any uh, electrical systems in a, in a state of, of danger 
in, in previous work we've done. So, and I, I don't know if Derek has any, um, I hope I'm not catching too much by surprise by, by all this. I tried to catch you earlier today, but. Uh, yeah. But No, we can look back and see possibly which ones. We won't have very, like we have records of where we've gone, but we won't know who's actually grounded to the, to the water service. What we're doing in the future is we've already put in our estimate sheets uh, just a note to remind myself and Darren when we give someone an estimate that if they are if they are grounded out to on the water meter that uh, they need to call an electrician and we, we leave it there we don't tell them what to do we don't tell them to unhook it we just tell them they need to contract electrician because they're their metal piping so since we don't know which ones we may have touched or not because the past procedure has been a uh, plumber will stub out of the building and we connect up to where the plumber stubs out. But it, sometimes the town does right to the water meter. We don't know what, which projects. Should we be sending a letter to all places that we've that we've changed to have them look at it? I, I'm not, I don't want to alarm people, but I think we possibly could have had an incident already where, where the ground has been removed and not put back. So I think maybe a letter would be prudent. It's possible, definitely, in some of the older older places. Like normally, it's not typical that our guys would would really touch anything. That like when the plumber's there, they know to take over. But it's when the meter's right there on the other side, and our guys basically bring the bring the the hose there and go. No, oh, that's as far as we can go. They get the old government employee roll eye look and go. Really, you got one foot to go, and you're going to stop. So it. You know what I mean? Like they do it out of courtesy, but uh, we can send those letters just as a word of caution or something. exactly. Yeah. I think you, that your council door, you're talking about if it's not connected to the the metal water pipe, that's that copper big plate that they have to carry yeah, yes. in the ground yes. beside the house. Okay. Healthy. How, how do you like the what you're talking about? I'll give you an example. I brought some kind of flashback. My father used to be a radio and television put up antennas in my job was when they put up the tower to ground it, take a big long rod like that, drive it in the ground and then a piece of cable then it would attach to the tower. So the thing was grounded, they got struck with lightning. Where, where, where you're put, they're using the, the water pipe as a grounding electrode, but when you put that into something that's not metal, you no longer have a grounding electrode. So this, your whole safety system, electrical safety system is dependent on that grounding electrode. So we may, we may have gone into places, put in non-metallic non uh, piping, and not paid the, the due diligence required to that ground. How do we identify? Do I have to hire an electrician to go over it? Yeah, you should, yeah. I know the guy. So, and there may have been an instance already where this has happened. So, that's not proven though. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have a time machine, but uh, I don't know how else you would prove it. But so I just think we should, uh, should possibly send a letter. So, but I, I guess you send a, <coughs> the town sends out the letter saying, "Hey, I'm going to get a contract to check all those places." So I'm bringing this up to council's attention. It's whatever you guys think we should do. I invite my electrical friend over for dinner. Well, not everybody has an electrical friend, Wayne. This is well, no, serious. Good plan. Fine. We do have really good records on the the properties that we've been to, mm -hmm. so it's not like sending a letter <coughs> to everybody. You know, basically, basically the be better creating our staff check their records. Well, but they don't have records of which ones they've brought into the building or which ones they've stubbed. We have records of where we've been, so they would have to send to anywhere that. But they've converted from metallic to non-metallic. Do you even know where those are? Yeah. So I, I so think it was a, a rather than contact everybody. Oh, for said. sure. Yeah, we yeah. would well, have to contact town. Like you're going to create a panic. No, you wouldn't contact the whole town. No. No, just the just the ones where they had the yeah. okay. pipes converted from metallic to yeah. plastic or whatever. It's How many people would that be? Um, twenty per year. Twenty-five per year. For how many years? I don't know, that would be a, that's the question, how far back do we go? When did we start using non metallic pipe? Before I got here. That's part of your answer. <laughs> <laughs>
2005 or something like that. Let's go back to 2005 then. I guess with that we can check too because we have <coughs> <can't laughs> <do it. coughs> okay, Item 6 on the agenda. Oh, item 5.2. I don't know 5.2. I don't remember, I just added it. Okay, what was that? That was uh, chamber, the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Wanting to do the, uh, I don't know what they want to call it, what it would be called. What is, I was getting conflicting messages over the emails, so where, where are, are we going ahead with it? The chamber has indicated that they will probably go ahead with it, with or without us. Concert sample. I don't understand. I guess I, I've never had anything explained to me what what it involved or what it what it's going to be. I heard alcohol involved. I heard they didn't want really a presentation or they didn't want a question and answer from us. You know, it had to do with our water crisis. Uh, you know, to let everybody know. That's all I know basically. And, uh, I think the date is going to be March 7th. I think most of the stuff has gone on. I think we've kept the public very informed. And I just see no purpose to having a party for the water crisis. I, you know, it was what it was. I think everybody did a great job. It's not a recognition. Uh, I don't understand. I, I can't give you any more information than we have than we had as far as yeah. yeah with that poster that Councilor Jacobson showed us last time said so so I I I kind of agree with you I don't really know if it's the proper venue I think we've done a pretty good job at letting people know what what went on yeah, I think if there was more questions that arose we would have more questions and as time goes on and we can give more uh, information as to what's going to happen with the future well too then we'll put that information out there but other than that I think everything's done that can be done okay that's where we'll sit with that so I, so what I'm saying or understanding is that I think it's a consensus of council that we don't need a pat on the back party for what what it sounds like. Well, it's doing our job. Exactly. That's good wording. We just appreciate what's done and we're happy with the cooperation today. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So I'm down with I'm not sure. What do they, they want a yes or no answer from us today? What's the question? Are we willing to take this thing over basically in 10 years? I, I can't quite remember our, regu our first resolution. Our first resolution said that our only part was as we were going to give them a piece of property. Other than that, we were out. And I'm still, I'm still okay with that. Like our, our original resolution, we haven't changed, and I think we're still with that. I think if they have a board or if they have a group that wants to run it, I don't think it should be something that the town of Swan River pays for. Uh, I wasn't under the assumption of that until the other night. I'm still of the opinion that this has is strangely similar to the situation with the wellness center and it scares the heck out of me that we're going down the same path and we never learn from the first experience. I agree with Jason. Okay, well if, the, if there's no new resolution on the table then the resolution we've passed is the one is the town's policy. I think after sitting through the budget meeting earlier tonight and, and a couple of weeks ago Yes, they they say they'll have ten years worth of funding for it, but we all know that sometimes things fall through, plans change, things happen. I just can't see us adding even one single penny of additional responsibility to our recreation budget. But our our recreation budget has over doubled since I've been here. It, well, then maybe it is my fault. It, absolutely. Do Our recreation budget was well under half a million dollars ten years ago, and now it's over a million dollars. So, Councilor Sapp. I know we're always looking for partners, as in our other surrounding municipalities, to help fund something like this. Has anybody asked them? Have these guys gone to the other municipalities to ask if they're willing to partially fund this? Because at the end of the day, it's going to be the Valley's project. And whether Minotonis likes it, or Bonito likes it, or Swan Valley West likes it, there's going to be a percentage of their people that are going to use it on the town of Swan River's taxpayer's dime, is what it's going to come to. 
And as much as I applaud these guys for all the work they're doing, I think our original resolution stands as it is. So we'll donate the land for free and next, next to our property if they wish. So that's a pretty substantial donation. <coughs> not as if we will not care for the thing, we will not own the thing. Will not be ours because they said they said they were going to give ten years operational costs based on the first year of operation. Well, we just go through the budget. One year, inflation costs change. You know, almost every, immediately. Every so you're not so. getting ten years. Like I, I applaud the system and I applaud the kids for going ahead and with their plan and stuff like that. And they state that they're going to have all the money before shovel hits the ground. We can control that with. The building or the building permit or development permit with that, but ultimately that's gonna that project's gonna end up on the taxpayers of Thomas Owen River. It's plate for operational, and I think that with the, from what I've been understanding, the, the community is, is split on it. Like some are saying, "Great, yeah, I can, I got no problem paying for that," and then there's others that are saying that not a chance. Like we're already paying too much on recreation, so. It's a sample. We have a huge burden right now, which is the wellness center, which is costing our ratepayers a lot of money. Uh, you know, and we had huge promises from people that we're going to fundraise. I think before we go anywhere, if this group so graciously wants to donate the funds to the wellness center to try to bring the deficit down, I think before we look at any other water activities or water uh, recreation, I think we have to focus on the one we have before we get into a second. Pay off first. Yeah. Well, we've got 19 more year payments to make. 19 more years. So, Council Glory. Um, can we? Should we send? We should send a letter back to the committee, though. I mean, they've asked us for yeah. an answer. Say that nothing has changed. Our our existing resolution, resolution stands, and we, the town of Swan River will not be entertaining operating this thing. They will not be entertaining any more than that. And that's where we we passed that, must have been close to a year ago, mm -hmm. and that was our situation, because that was where, that was what how it was explained to us at the time. Yeah. That's what they offered to us, for that matter. So, so will you be able to draft a letter? Yeah. Okay. Between Julie and I, we'll do something. Okay. So we put we, it on we, the list. We send it by us before we send it out, yeah. so, so we can prepare for any backlash. Okay, Superintendent Works Report. Questions to Derek. Um, how is well number two uh, replacement coming along? Uh, right now, basically we're scheduling uh, a test drill. So we're assuming, like ever since the emergency happened, we've always assumed that we would need this dual rotary drill and talking to a few contractors, that is not a cheap option. So we don't, we just want to be careful that we're not just going ahead. <coughs> Based on one person say so. Hiring these dual rotary drills, right. So what we've done is uh, we do have AE who brought a hydrogeologist on site last week. And, uh, and they are recommending that we do a, a pre-test hole drill in the location that well 2 is going to be in and that can happen hopefully uh, is later this week or possibly early next week but with the drill rig that was used at very minimal cost. So that'll, that'll help us determine, it'll help that geologist determine whether the water that we're going to get <coughs> the well is going to be adequate. More importantly, it'll, it'll let us know whether we can do this with a single rotary drill and save as much as 50% or more on our drilling costs. So we, we want to do that due diligence. I know that I, I said in my report that I would give council a, a report with the costs, and I did do that. I started it last week, and these costs, as I stated in here, are very loose. They're, as you can see, they're the ranges because uh, we don't know that answer yet until we do that test hole which will hopefully happen later this week uh, when we do know that stuff uh, 
I've kind of given you guys my guidelines of how this project is going to go forward, and then I've also asked AE to do to do one as well. So they're they're quite similar because uh, you know we we're a tight group, but uh, I just figure you guys should have them both in in our consultants' eyes, and then my own. Uh, there are different levels of detail, but it it does. Uh, it does basically spell out where where we want to go with this project, cut into two phases. The first phase it basically finishes our emergency fix as well too, gets it back online, <coughs> allows us to inspect well one and further inspect the casing in well three. Once we have that information, phase two starts where we can start uh, uh, adding monitoring, Changing out, changing out the hydro service to go to 600 volt pumps. When we do that, uh, there, well, there's a whole list you'll see uh, for phase two. Obviously, uh, I, I have asked Associated Engineering to give me a Class D estimate. Uh, they would really like to do that after phase one, but because uh, we know phase one is going to happen if we want back, if we want our three wells back. So, what's a phase or a Class D estimate? Uh, it's the first of four stages. So, uh, like in a, on a typical on a typical project, before you get your pre-design done, <clears throat> I guess during your pre-design, you would have your very first <laughs> estimates. Okay. So it would it wouldn't be extremely detailed like a class A. Very rough estimate. There. Rough estimate. Okay. So, so, so second question I got follow up that. Um, well one is holding out with like well one and well three like the pumps yeah and so the new pump that we have for well two is still is fully functional to go down well one if that pump yes dies yes so that so we have a good backup for that uh, new pump if we need for well one which gives you ample time to actually do this due diligently proper um, to if save tax dollars. Yes, if well one pump goes down, we have the guts inside the well to put inside of well one that will get it back online to give us time to still work on well two. Any other questions? Yeah. So on these uh, recommendations here for cleaning the uh, uh, detention chamber at the water treatment plant, that's what they want to clean annually, or, or, or how they want guys to go in there and scrub it, or what, how, what do they mean by clean it? That, they don't want that done annually. They're, they're mostly talking about what has happened uh, uh, at the emergency, but also, I guess, uh, since we told them that both raw distribution lines were on, they know the velocities are low, and they explain in there that sediment could, mm -hmm. be, could be a problem. So they do want to check that, and if there is lots of sediment, they it's kind of disputed on on what to do there. If we find lots of sediment, then we probably will take out one of our raw distribution lines. The quest, the hard question is, is that it is AC pipe, and if it loses that pressure, it increases the risk of it to break, and now we don't have a second line that we can use. So it's it's a uh, there's pros and cons to each decision, and I think until we take a take a look inside that detention chamber, get inside that access uh, access hatch, and take a look, then we'll know. So you got to let it go low to get in there. Yeah, we'll do that. We won't do that until after we have good wells and pumps to make sure we can fill it up quickly again. Not a lot's happening with uh, until well two is done. Okay. On, on the phase two, it looks like they're going to add a lot more controls and stuff in, in, in a new little building out at the uh, well site. Will that be integrated with the existing water treatment plant controls? Because I guess my own concern, that's all well and good to have there, but if it's not there's not a person stationed out there. So if it's not integrated with our existing system. Well, we are, we are going to put the materials this year what needs to be out there so we can have full pump monitoring mm -hmm. and flow monitoring. Yeah. The, the, the PLC plans we know at the treatment plant are going to be next year or the following year. Mm -hmm. So even if our system right now can't handle that amount of information, mm -hmm. we know within a year that we're going to be upgrading the PLCs at the plant. So as soon as it's online, we'll get that extra information. So they need to, they need to design this with that in mind and, and yes. you'll make sure that they do that? Yes. Okay. Oh, and I see you're going to run the new power underground out there? 
We're just inquiring with Hydro on the costs. Okay. But, uh, just to see what kind of difference it is? Yeah. Because we don't have a particular requirement to run underground there or anything. No. It's, it's cheaper will run overhead, I would assume, right? Yes. Okay. And the, right now, the, the, the power line is directly over well one, so we can't do anything with well one until it's moved. And Hydro is expecting to do that later this week or the next. Okay. Councilor White. Just a compliment to your team. They're doing the street cleaning today. And there were no ropes. I could drive that car. What happened at the end of uh, Ross Street on Ross Street there? At some point, you have a break there. I have to be honest. I don't know. I drove by that yesterday, and I, that was one of the things Darren didn't update me on is what happened at the north end of Thirteenth. So I can get back to okay. the owner. Any other questions? The motion moved by Councillor. Morio, second by Councilor Delory, resolve a superintendent works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councilor Lori, second by Councilor Morio. Resolve the bylaw enforcement officer report for January 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Oh, we've done the RCMP report and we've done the Veterans Hall. The management minute. For February 8th and 15th. Any questions to Julie or Derek on those? No. Okay, council member reports. Councilor Morio. Um, had the G5 meeting at the Big Woody Hall on Monday uh, the 12th. Uh, a few things were discussed. Had a presentation from the Valley and the Mountains um, committee uh, with some of their mapping and tourism activities that they got planned. Um, they also were going to have uh, their meeting last Thursday, but that got rescheduled due to the storms to tonight, so I wasn't able to attend that. Um, we had a budget meeting uh, prior to council meeting tonight, and that's all I have. Councilor Delorvia. Uh, the G5 last week, it was probably one of the no no big surprises there, There's no big revelations or anything. Um, the only thing that I, are we go, do we have a plan to send our water guys out to uh, Minnetonis sometime during our non-busy season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got your email there. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then budget tonight. We're whittling away slowly but surely, but we got a ways to go. So that is it for me. Councilor Sacco. Uh, not too much. On the 10th, I attended a fundraiser that was held in the community um, called Sled for Eternity. It's a group of people that raise money province-wide for a women's shelter in Brandon. This year, they managed to raise $80,000, uh, which is a huge amount. Uh, some of the costs involved uh, for somebody to go into treatment is like $3,000 a day. So there's been over six people that have attended. Uh, have been to this women's shelter for uh, addictions recovery, so it, it is a good cause. I, I feel one person alone raised twenty three thousand dollars, like it's crazy. A lot of there's a lot of misconception about this fundraiser. They feel that there's eighty thousand dollars raised out of Swan River that leaves Swan River. Uh, the real picture is there's about probably about eight thousand dollars that gets raised from Swan River directly and it goes to this, this shelter it, and, the, and the long and the short of it is if, if somebody does need help, Brandon is the closest place so so it is basically our local shelter to begin with and another thing it does is it brings in I think there was 80 snowmobiles that went on the ride and I just figured out fuel cost for one day without hotel rooms was like $7,000 that it brought back to the community so uh, with that being said I don't think much money was taken out of the community probably more so brought in and plus there was a chance for one of the local snowmobile clubs to showcase their trails and nothing but positives the whole day 
Um, so that was on the tenth. Twelfth was uh, was the G five. Again, nothing too exciting. Great meal put on by by the the hall board over there. Had the opportunity to be the mayor on uh, February the fourteenth. Main Streeting with the mayor. Had a little interview with uh, GX ninety four. Was kind of interesting. Uh, last Saturday on the seventeenth, I had a call. Pelly Saskatchewan is going through the same same epidemic we went through with our water situation. Very similar. Three wells, no water. I think they're a little worse off. They had they've had to shut their water off numerous times, and have gone through a boil water advisory or still on it. Uh, they were in dire straits of some pallets of water, so. We arranged it and they had no way of getting it here, so I ended up taking three pallets to them and then hand bombing off them to their shed. They were extremely happy, so so that was kind of kind of nice uh, as well. On you know we had 14 pallets to go. I think my calculation was today uh, we're down to three pallets that we have to go. So not too bad. I think one more little push and we should be we should be getting those all out of the out of the uh, public workshop by no later than the end of next week so that's a positive and yeah that's all I have to report. Councillor Friesen. I um, also went out to the G5 meeting and I enjoyed the uh, Valley in the Mountains presentation by Bev and uh, Heather. I think they uh, are very uh, positive and passionate. I had a call at the store the other day from Debbie Soloway from Cowan and they want to introduce um, places where tourists etc can uh, rent things and so they were asking Ross if he'd be interested in, you know, um, encouraging tourists to come and he could rent them skates, bikes, cross country skis, things like that. So. Um, they are on a push to encourage tourists to come here and have actually something to do when they do get here. Um, Communities of Bloom registration, I know we just had a blip about on the budget. It's uh, $400 and uh, it means that we have judges come again. Uh, if you don't have any objections, I would like to do that again. And if you have objections, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not. Um, and this uh, COPP, I really like it. I've talked about this for actually years. And I, uh, I hope it gets off the ground. I hope people are interested enough to uh, help with this. It just extra eyes and ears on the public. Uh, they don't have to do any kind of policing. But uh, it's just to be out there maybe a couple hours out of, out of your month. And if people are interested, I hope they go and see Stacy at the chamber and uh, she can either tell them uh, what they have to do or who they have to see. Um, yeah, that's it. There was a great supper out at the G5. That's all. No problems. Yeah. 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 Councilor White. <laughs> Pretty busy. Uh, I went to the Northwest Métis Council meeting where they're planning for for the year, and it's interesting. They have the same concerns as we do, of course. Uh, look at house, homelessness, a big deal, a huge deal in our community. Uh, housing and the programs, the academic programs. I enjoyed that. February 9th, I was asked by the snowman people to uh, bring greetings on behalf of our council. I think there's 17 clubs here. Uh, they had their annual general meeting from much of western Manitoba, I think it's straight to the border. And uh, again, 50 plus sleds, 50, 100 people are having dinner and uh, bringing a lot of cash into our community, which was appreciated. The 14th, I went to the uh, UCN stakeholders meeting. We had uh, all the stakeholders, I think I was sort of representing the mayor who was uh, busy. But I was also with the idea of talking about the, the dental assistance program. I didn't need to. They're all over it. They have plans, how to do it, where to do it, how to go. That was probably their number one area of discussion. And uh, they were very excited about it. They talked about other things like Aboriginal Northern Council skills, truck driver training, supervisor development. It went on and on. It was, uh, it was a good course. And they talked about the Living Word Bible and the possibility of bringing up to 300 people into our community. So housing jumped out again as being uh, a big deal. So that, that was interesting. 
I went to the harm meeting on the 15th. That was a little scary. I alluded to the RCMP officers. They had real, real concerns about mental health issues, big issue in our community, and the uh, transitional home group that I belong with. Mental health is just keep coming up, coming up, and yet I don't see anything concrete coming out from other entities some I belong to. And the drug issues, uh, there's concerns uh, about why drugs are proliferating. Bed bugs, holy smokes, big, big issue in the community, none that uh, I was aware of. And again, the homelessness with uh, couch surfers, people who have no place, get kicked out of one town, end up here, and then they try to find a place they send up with the RCMP. Uh, North Mountain dinner, again, uh, they had a dinner uh, where I should compliment, uh, again, uh, Councillor Sackle. I think Councillor Sackle donated the quad that, that the young guy, uh, the sled rather, the skidoo, because I can't say that. That was one, and uh, I think, Jason, you sold the most tech organized it also had a compliment to you, sir. And then, uh, when I go with MLA, Director of Parks, West Region, Director of Parks, I spent uh, been a part of the day with them yesterday, uh, looking at uh, tourism potentials in the Duck Mountains and concerns of some of the uh, owners of properties up there. And they're very excited about our potential also. And I can't thank Jason, uh, Councilor Sackle, enough for getting up on a Sunday. Your team got involved. Uh, who came over and loaded it all for you guys? Uh, Troy and Councilor Morio, you came and helped? Well, I watched. Watched, but uh, we, our town team again, Troy Turton and Jason, just to do that, that honorable thing on a Sunday and it's 25 flipping below, and you loaded up all that stuff and you got it out. Uh, so it's again a compliment to our town and yourself, Jason. So thank you. Like that's it. I'll end a half of a budget meeting. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> <Wayne. laughs> just. For me, it's glad to be back and again to compliment council, and administrative staff, and public works, and everybody in the community involved in the, the water crisis. I know you've heard everything about it before, but uh, just thank you on behalf of the citizens. I was there for the first part of it. And, uh, thank you guys for carried the load, so thank you. The term blister was floating around. I'm not sure what it's about, but we'll share it later with you. So we'll go to bylaws and resolution. Uh, the motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Resolve that bylaw 3, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Sun River to regulate building within the town. You read a second time. Discussion? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Again, you guys are going to be like. Um, on item E, uh, 4.2.1.2, item E. Non-structural alterations or repair with value of such work is less than five thousand dollars, including stucco, all that stuff. So I don't I don't understand why we have the dollar limit in this. You, either either you need you need a permit to do this work or you don't. If I'm putting in kitchen cabinets that cost four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, I don't need a permit if they cost five thousand and one. I do. What to me I don't. I, I think we should take out everything after. Uh, uh, after the word repairs, up to the word including. So and, and unless there's a good re reason for why we're... <coughs> the reason why we did this is we did contact the assessment branch and we found the items on the, on the no permit list directly affected the owner's assessment. Therefore, it would make sense that if someone's putting their kitchen cabinets and changes their assessment, that we should be, if, especially if it's $30,000, we should be you know, having them go through a permit. So there's there were several examples, and sorry I was so ill prepared at the last meeting, but uh, like there was a residential owner that, that did $35,000 uh, upgrade to his house with flooring and cabinets, all interior, but uh, according to this, we couldn't justify a, a permit with the way it was done, but it, obviously the work that he did directly affected his assessment. <clears throat> That's the main reason. And it's the permit that triggers to do a reassessment. The permits go to the assessment branch. And I, I don't know how they determine whether. Mm -hmm. But that triggers the, the assessment branch to know that there's been a violation. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that, that I, everybody has to pay their fair share of taxes, but this just makes when people are going to hear this, they're just going to be even more cynical because 
that's basically what people think building permits are for, and, and really their true intention is to pr protect the housing stock of, of the town. But when they hear that we want that in there, so I, I don't know if I can still su support that yet. Yeah, I agree, how else do you catch it? But we don't. when we tell people, well, no, a building permit is not to increase your taxes, it's to, you know, to make sure things are done right for you and for the next buyer, make sure our, our housing stock is in, in, in good shape so I I don't know I still would like to see it gone but see what you guys see that's it's not up to us to determine like assess, assessments are done every second year it's not up to us to dictate or them when they should go into a home and, and do a complete on-site evaluation and stuff like that so but they do that based on our permits, right? But I, but I, I agree with yourself. It's it's a, um, to remove that that portion because it's just can you do it on third reading? Like change it on the third reading? We can do it right now on second reading. What what's, what change? The, no, no, this was in there before. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I I just been thinking more and more about it. It always struck me as odd that why would. One dollar more will trigger a permit or not. Well, I understand if you're going to use a dollar, there has to be some sort of threshold, but why have the threshold at all if the value of what you're putting in doesn't affect the structural integrity of the thing you're building, then what, what are we protecting against? And, and likewise, I actually question the other way, why we exclude uh, geothermal fields and if we're in it, I'm fine with excluding them here as long as they're in, we should make sure they're included in our zoning bylaw then. Because we we need to have some sort of way to make sure a, a geothermal field is going where it's supposed to go on, on the property. It should be part of the, if it's not part of the building permit process, it should be part of the development permit process. Yeah, we left it out of the building because it's not. Yeah, it's not in the building. but. Uh, can we double check to see if it's if uh, geothermal fields show up anywhere in the zoning? So do you want to change it now? What is the wish of council? I would I would like to change it, but I'm just one one voice. So whatever uh, whatever the rest of you guys think. I'm good with taking. You said take take uh, alterations or repairs. Period. I would or after the word repairs, I would just put comma including, and then the things that we right get rid of where the value of such yeah. work less than five thousand yeah. dollars including. So stucco siding, shingles, doors, windows, cabinet shelves at any cost, no permit. Well, I'm just thinking in my, in my own. I reshingled my roof, and it cost me more more than five thousand dollars, but it didn't increase the. I, I didn't change anything structurally. I didn't. But and it but yeah. and it didn't. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Sir. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you did need a permit for that? I don't know. I no, not at the time. We're just adding all this stuff in red right now. Well, using that example, uh, a regular home that's under five thousand, you're just changing the singles, and you get a bigger home, and it's six thousand dollars, and you need a building permit, but you're not. Changing anything structurally either. So, I guess if no, if nobody's willing to change it, then where is the value? Then should the value be different? Right? I have. I may make a motion to amend it right now. Okay. But I need somebody to second that. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion moved by Councilor Glory, second by Councilor Morial, that the dollar thresholds be removed in both cases. In the case of the uh, just for, for item E. Item E. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Yeah, okay. Carried. Four to two. We have a motion moved by Council Delaria, second by Council Memorial, resolve that bylaw 3 2018 being bylaw of Town of Swan River to regulate building within the town be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? So this, this, this was the amended? Yeah. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor 
Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that bylaw 3 2018 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate building within the town be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the accounts as follows will hereby approve for payment. General accounts from check 21999 to 22060 for total of $138,854.32, and payroll account from check 4162 to 4169 for a total of $110,102.77. I have the CIA Chief Financial Officer's comments for the checks. Councillor Memorial. Uh, check number 0021999, the very first one, Clear Tech Industries. That is the water treatment plant, chemical. <coughs> you had that already. Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? Carried. Julie, your report, I forgot. Starling Times column and it's scheduled for March 13th for the town. Is there any volunteers for doing a call? March 13th. When's the deadline on that? It'll have to be March um, 7th this Thursday. March the 8th. I could do one. Could I haven't done one in a while. Okay. As soon as you lose, call tomorrow. <laughs> I was thinking how to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just to clarify on the local improvement plan bylaw process, um, what happens now is um, we have to uh, prepare some paperwork that goes into the board, um, along with the one letter of object objection we've received. Um, so then we wait until the municipal board uh, provides their approval on that uh, bylaw, and then when it comes back, that's when we'll do segmentary meeting. And uh, there will also be a notice of, um, of the right to appeal. Um, a notice will be given to the person that provided the written objection, um, um, letting them know that. Uh, Council plans to go through the second and third reading once it comes back from the municipal board. And uh, I had an email from uh, Jack Dick with regards to the work crew. You'll remember when we discussed budget before and when um, Warren had come to a council meeting, he had talked about needing a truck for the work crew. So um, Jack was letting me know that he's got um, some movement in their budget. Their budget can go up a bit, so um, we were talking at our last meeting about the possibility of the town um, leasing a truck so that the work crew program could pay lease payments because um, the work crew program itself can't own the truck, so they, but they need some way of having a truck year-round. So I was just wondering if council would be open to you know, us looking into that process and starting that process of looking into leasing a truck. Of course, it has to go through the borrowing bylaw process. So to, uh, okay. sorry, um, have they checked at other places where they can lease vehicles, but can't they lease themselves? Or uh, I don't believe they would be able to. Um, Jack never, like when we talked about the program buying a truck or leasing a truck, he, mm -hmm. he doesn't say that they can do that. Because yeah. one place I would suggest checking is the Vehicle Equipment Manage Management Agency of the province that can do short-term lease. They don't have to be for a full year, they can be for one month, two months, it doesn't have to be a brand new pickup, it can be... What was that called? FEMA, uh, Vehicle Equipment Management Agency, I can get you to contact information. Okay. Okay. But they can do all kinds of wet, dry leases or all that stuff, short term, long term, um, versus being locked into leasing a vehicle from a uh, dealership or something that's 
So they can't actually sign a lease agreement. They just want to give us the equivalent of amount of money. We That's don't. Right. We don't necessarily have to lease one. We could purchase one. Well, yeah, we could. We could, we could purchase, purchase a, a used one, exactly. and they could just pay us yeah. the. Because I would far, you know. I don't, it's just that they wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to. Um, like they wouldn't be able to pay us a lump sum for a vehicle. They would, would have to pay it back to us over time. That would be fine. I, I would also look at uh, getting a used vehicle. Yeah, definitely. Yes. That's what we were looking at for even a lease, mm -hmm. was a used vehicle. So, yeah. But I would look at even purchasing one if I can get somebody else to basically pay for well, a vehicle I just for was us. looking at a way for it to not affect our budget. You know, that's the only thing I just and it really And it really won't if they're paying for it. Okay. We need some sort of a contract with Jack Dick sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. because uh, right now we're we're renting a vehicle um, from from someone in town here, but it's only for a short period of time. Like it's not for the whole year. So. Because even if we had to, you know, if you were to go affect the budget, if you had to pull it out of one of the reserves and put back in the equivalent amount of what they're paying us, I mean, okay, that's. We're not owed any money. Okay. Good. Um, and then um, I had spoke with municipal government about the general reserve amount, and that amount was uh, seventy six thousand six forty one. So that was a question you'd have for me. The amount that we would be able to take from general reserve. They will let us take that amount. Yeah, we. Because you had asked for two hundred thousand. Well, I had asked for what percentage we would be able to take. Oh, because Terry said we were below the threshold. Yes. Yeah. So, so we are? We are a bit below the threshold. We, we are doing, um, how did she put it? We are doing a lot better than a lot of towns. Mm -hmm. You know, we maintain a very good um, threshold. And she gave me the percentage where, you know, she feels that would be okay. would be allowable. Now, what about the surplus from 2017? How can we can, we can carry that forward uh, into this year's budget? Yeah, I'll have to check with Terry on that. If you know, if in his calculation, he's already. I know he doesn't want that. us to know about the surplus yet. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, but I'll double check with him on that. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'll double check with him on that and see how that affects this figure. Well, not, not, not how it affects that figure, because we want that figure in there as well. We want the, what, yeah, the, okay. the yeah, 88 grand in there, yeah. We don't want to <coughs> subtract from that with, yeah. we want both. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. And uh, then tomorrow we're going to Dauphin for the meeting at the RCMP detachment office. So. Okay. Okay. Brief yeah. me on the trip of what it's about. Yeah, I, I have... I have printed off the last um, uh, invoice, policing invoice, and I made copies for us. So uh, we'll uh, take that with us. And I gave a copy to Steve as well. He was asked for a copy. When you had asked for the 200000 what she said that wouldn't be a good idea? What I did say was what would be allowed. I didn't what actually did? give her a figure oh, okay. because I, you know, I said, okay, you know, we're, you know, we're at the threshold or we're close, you know, what would be allowed? That's what I said. And I and I didn't know what that figure okay. would be, but yeah. So I, I made copies of the invoice. We'll take that and I got a list of the questions and I'll pick you up before quarter day or before quarter after eight <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen, was all the Mayor and Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to attend the AMM Mayor's Reeves and Seals District Meeting held in Brandon on April 10th. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sample, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved the Chief Administrative Officer, Mayor, and Council be authorized to attend the AMM Municipal Official Seminar being held in Brandon 
on April 11th and 12th, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Most carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that the purchase of a model. Sorry to interrupt. I just needed to know if whoever is able to go could let me know so I can register. So uh, just whenever, whenever you're able to let me know. 11 to 12. 11 to 12. Yeah. I'll try to go. Okay. I'll try. So, Brad? Yeah. You going? You going? Jason, you can't? Um, sick day. I don't get sick days, but I'm taking three days off the week before for union negotiations, so. You're on the other side now. <coughs> no, for here. Oh, here, I thought it was for you. No, no, for here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the day. That's like a fancy one. <laughs> You're the wall. Okay, you got that, Julie? Yeah. Thank you. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that the purchase of a model JDA1 labeler from JDA Progress Industries for a total of $13,954.50 be approved. Discussion? Councillor Morley? <coughs> so just to confirm, Smack Dab is going to pay that other portion, uh, the town's portion, like that invoice? That's uh, up for discussion on the next uh, resolution there. I have drafted uh, an agreement, and um, and you guys can tell me what you want me to do there. Okay. Well, can we do it with the other one first, then? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, mayor's <laughs> the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolve the Chief Administrative Officer here be authorized to send the vet, sign the Veterans Community Hall Labeler Use Agreement with SmackDown. Discussion? Councillor Deloria. So I see it's a little bit different than what she proposed. So have mm -hmm. you gone over this with her? No, I haven't. But I was talking with Lana about mm -hmm. it. She does have concerns that. Lana has um, concerns or SmackDown has concerns? Uh, uh, Lana. Okay. She was concerned that if um, you know SmackDown pays for a portion of this unit, then it will be um, seen to be owned partially by them. So I just wasn't sure how to to go about this. Like we're we're asking SmackDown to um, definitely you know provide you know some care and uh, to put some um, expenses towards it, um, getting it uh, delivered, setting it up, and taking care of the day to day maintenance plus training Lana on it because we really don't have anyone else to do that. Um, but, but it's up to you guys. I mean, she proposed to pay that $3,000, um, but Lana's <coughs> concern is, you know, then does one third of that belong to them? Well, I think if the agreement would outline that, yeah, you, she's paying for it, but it still it's belongs to the okay. town, and she's signing that she agrees to, and, uh, and she will basically work off the loan in reverse, or work off the payment in reverse, like she she is paid up front, but she'll get the discount till that's paid for. Mm -hmm. So, because that way it doesn't affect our budget at all. Yeah. So I I would like to still see her pay she, for it. She's away right now. She's okay. away for a couple of weeks, so we we'll want to get a chance to really talk to her about it. Get the, so, do we need to have this money spent, or so the government's money spent by, by a certain time by March or something? We could take all this, um, you know, this agreement resolution, if you like, and I can re Double and, and talk with her about it as well. Double try that time because I think she did mention in there that it would remain property of the town. But that can be double checked in her proposal. Yeah. Um, that's what it said. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, if we go ahead and buy the thing without an agreement, we're taking on some risk there. So she's away right now? Yeah, she's away. She, she's not contactable? No, she's out of the country. She's... 
We don't know if she likes our last. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't know if she likes. She just made her presentation, and that's mm -hmm. it. Well, she'll be back before the deadline. You know, we know when the deadline I don't, is. She didn't say when she was coming back. Lana, Lana may know when she's coming back. Maybe defer this to next meeting and then, because I think it was to the end of March. If it's, if it's imperative March, that it be done before the next meeting, we can call it a special meeting. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But if you if you could somehow get a message to her that she, if she is to contact you, that would be great. Okay. And she, I don't she, really she want to bother her because she's well, on her honeymoon. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> Do you want her label or not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll table these resolutions? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So we need a motion to. So, yeah, I'll do that. So I, I guess in the meantime, can you work on an agreement? Yeah, that I, can see, add, I can add in. See there. her purchase it. Yeah. It, it would okay. be the town's, and she would be basically working off their purchase in reverse. Something okay. similar to what you proposed. Because yeah. I, I think. What she um, what she's wanting to get out of paying that three thousand, from what I read in her proposals, is having exclusive use of that unit. So that's something that she probably won't agree to if she's. I'm just making an assumption, but that was her thing. You know, they wanted to pay a portion of that so that they would have exclusive use of the unit. Well, wow. to me, that's a deal breaker. Like it, it's bought by public funds and. As long as it's vetted by our hall manager and stuff like that, it, it's it's public equipment that's. We like trust Lam is not going to let any Joe go yeah, and wreck it. That's so right. yeah. either she wants it to deal with us or doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we want to take over both of them. The one we need to purchase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll I'll do resolution. Okay. Zero eight nine and zero eight eight. The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sack will resolve the Town of Swan River Recreation Department continue to sponsor the work group program from June 30th, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sack will resolve that Mayor McKenzie, Councillor White, and the CAO will be authorized to attend the RCMP MPSA presentation held in Dauphin February 21st. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Sacco. Resolve that Councillor White be appointed municipal weed inspector in the town. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. I made a mistake. <laughs> 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 Motion to move Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that Ken Cocott be appointed oh. municipal <laughs> <laughs> inspector on the town of Swan River for Not till next year. All in favor? <laughs> miss the meeting. We don't miss. <coughs> Excuse me. Motion moved by Councillor Delore or Memorial, second by Councillor uh, Delore that resolution resolutions 2018-088 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Right. Motion moved by Councillor Delore, second by Council Moore, resolve that resolution 2018.089 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Carried. <coughs> 